Hello students and welcome to the e-learning program initiated by Shri Gyan Manjri Vidyapit for the students of standard 10 in which we are learning the subject of social science. Students we are going to start with the last chapter in the geography section that is chapter number 14 from today onwards. Uh, when we complete this chapter, chapter number 14, we will be completing with the total geography section of this syllabus. Geography section starts with chapter number 8 that we have done. So, chapter number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 we have completed and chapter number 14 is the last chapter in the geography section. So, let us start with Today's lecture, lecture number one for chapter 14, name of the chapter is Transportation, Communication and Trade. Now, this chapter has three subtopics. The first one is Transportation, the second one is Communication and the third one is Trade. Now, why is this chapter included in the geography part? Because transportation we do on the geography, whether that is land, water or sea the same way communication also we do not only within our village within our town within our city within the state within the country but communication we do outside our country also again that is geography trade we do near our houses business and trade we buy and sell things near our houses in the city within the state uh, one state with another one country with another so everywhere includes geography right so that is the reason main reason why this chapter is included in the geography section we got to know the geographical part where the topic of transportation is included now we generally know that the Three routes taken for the purpose of transportation is the land route, the sea route and the air route out of which the land route is the most ancient one. When we had enough sufficient knowledge about uh, the nearby water bodies that we had, uh, the river that we had and we started with water transportation that is transportation in the water bodies are the flowing water that is rivers water bodies big lakes seas uh, bay and then the ocean when we got enough expertise in uh, ships and shipbuilding etc when we were able to set up ports dockyards that were necessary for big ships then after the invention of aeroplane there started a phase of air transportation so we are going to basically learn all this now all of that it has its center on land right whether we are talking about the land routes uh, air routes or the water transportation then we come to communication yes earlier we had communication in lots of different ways now we have again we have modernized ways of communication with the help of the latest science and technology that we are going to learn over here and then we'll learn about trade trade inside the country outside the country so these is the basically out now uh, this chapter has lots of importance because one mark map marking is going to come from this chapter though if you see the end of the chapter few maps are provided and uh, if you see in the textbook hardly few maps are uh, given there also which do not give us the exact information so uh, an attempt has been made to bifurcate the uh, topics and make maps for each section so we have clarity because questions generated from this chapter includes all those topics so we will do it one by one so let us start with our uh, lecture today's lecture first we will do transportation because this chapter covers three things first is transportation second is communication and the third one is trade so let us start with transportation transportation is one of the yardstick to measure the economic social political progress of a nation now this is just 
a general understanding about transportation. Now, we are not talking about what is transportation. That will come later. Definition of transportation will come later. First, what is the importance of transportation? Why transportation is selected? Right? Now, we have been learning from chapter 1 to 7 in history, that is uh, heritage of India, where we got prosperous because land routes to India were available, sea routes to India were available. So, foreign people from foreign countries, they came to trade, to do business with us through those land routes because we had very good land routes and not a very tough terrain. We had a very good, we have a very good internal, uh, that is inside the country, we have a very good terrain, which is usually flat, right? So, more people can come, quite a lot of interior in the country, do business and then take the goods, etc. back to their country. So, India has been favored for this reason. Yes, whereas you go to many other countries, for example, the Arabian countries, completely desertic. You'll get lost in it. Same way, uh, Afghanistan, hilly, uh, rocky terrain, and completely dry. Right. So, we do not have that same type of terrain throughout India. So, transportation is one of the yardstick. Now, what is a yardstick? Yardstick is the one yard. Ka hota hai. One yard is the measurement of a normal step that you take. That distance between the toe and the uh, next foot, that is called one yard. So, that is a standard measurement. So, yardstick here is to be taken as something with which we can measure our economic development, our social development and political development. So, Trans, uh, transportation is one of the yardstick. It is one way, it is one measure, men, method in which we can measure development of three, four things. First is economic development. Now, economy of a country can be very, very good if, I ha if it has a well laid out roadways, railways, waterways, airways. So, if these facilities are available very easily, then lots of goods and men and material can be transported from one place to another within no time. And before, even perishable goods, yes, which can be destroyed, decayed very easily, even those goods, before, in time, we can transport these goods and we can make money. So, economy of a country is dependent upon its transportation, the ease of transport, fast ways of transport. So, transportation is, of course, a standard measurement with which we can measure the economic uh, progress of a country, then social, right? If people have very less transportation facilities available, they cannot meet each other. They cannot go from place A to B within a very short time and again come back to place A within the, uh, before the day is over. If that fast transportation is not available, let the state of the art transportation facilities are not available, then what will happen? People will stay aloof from each other. Their education will cannot be imparted in such a way, trade cannot happen in such a way. So, people will stay aloof and their progress is going to be either stopped or it will be delayed. So, social progress of the people that will also be dominated with the help of transportation. Political progress, yes, politics changes quite fast and politics only, only that ruler will continue ruling for a long, a long time who is able to give lots of things to the people, lots of facilities to the people. Think about the welfare of the people. So, how fast you can do it? The political stability of a country gives a more push to the economic and social development of the country. Yes, more the ruler is stable, his rule is extended over quite a long period of time. That means complete stability is there. Where stability is there, only their economic progress can happen. If there is no po political uh, stability, if there is a complete political turmoil, yes, you don't know who is ruling and when the rule is being changed, if it changes after every three months, six months, every one year, then political stability is not there. People will be afraid to do transportation and business. Right? Social changes cannot happen because the rules keep on changing, the rulers keep on changing. Right? So, transportation again becomes a measurement to measure the political progress of the country.
country. Transportation has a very important contribution in the social, economic and physical progress of the nation. Now what is the physical progress? Yes, the number of roads, good roads, if they increase, that's a physical progress. The number of dams, multi-purpose projects increasing, that's a physical progress. Yes, the infrastructure, whether it is road, railways, uh, airports, airport, um, uh, uh, ports, etc. Right, that is all physical progress. Yes, people have enough money to buy land, enough money to construct uh, their own houses or their own factory. That is a physical progress. Right, so... What we see over here is transportation has a very important link in the and contribution in not only in, in political but also in social, co economic and physical progress of the nation. Now, transportation makes the exchange of goods and people possible. Now, it is not only about transportation is not only about transporting goods. Yes, transportation helps people go from one place to another. So, transportation makes exchange of people possible, exchange of goods possible. It also helps to link distant places. Now, uh, we are well connected from um, our state to the next state with the interstate highway, with the national highways. We are linked from one corner, say from the west of the country to the east of the. We have a complete link, un unbroken link where we can transport our goods and men and material from one place to another place. The farthest point, that is the eastern side. From northern side, that is from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. We have well laid out a uh, road system, rail system, air transportation system, so that people can travel in the fastest way possible, in the shortest time, and carry on with their progress. So. It also helps to link distant places. National integration and process like industrialization and urbanization are made possible too with the help of transportation. Now we'll take these things one, one by one. National integration. You do not wait, need a visa or you do not need uh, good enough uh, government documents or papers with you if you want to go from Gujarat to Maharashtra or Gujarat to Rajasthan. You just have your ID wherever you go in India. So this is national integration. Whole of the India is taken as a one unit. Yes, we divided the uh, one unit, that is one nation, into different states. Different states into different districts. Different di uh, the district into talukas and talukas into village panchayat. But that is for the administration purpose only. Whereas nobody stops you from going to a picnic from Gujarat to Tamil Nadu or anybody visiting uh, Mumbai from West Bengal because of national integration. We are one unit as a whole. We are one country as a whole. So transportation helps in keeping the unity of the country together. Nobody asks if the train gets empty at one of the stations. There will be thousands of people belonging to different places. Nobody asks them any question. Yes, because it's the right to roam around freely in the country to settle anywhere. That is a basic right that is given to us in the constitution. Right. So it helps in national integrity. Next thing, process like industrialization. Now I have set up an industry or people have set up an industry over here and they want to import uh, raw material prey, say from Delhi or from Kolkata or from Tamil Nadu. The raw material can reach Ahmedabad or it can reach Mumbai within no time because of the good roads that we have uh, and the latest transportation equipments that we have which can include um, uh, land routes, railway routes or air freight, whatever. We have the fastest ways to get the raw material with us. Now, when that raw material is processed in the industry, then again it has to be distributed throughout the country for sale. So, that also requires a very efficient roadways, railways, airways, waterways, all these things, right? So it helps in building up the economy of the country. So because industrialization, that process can go on, that progress can go on only when we have a very efficient transportation system in place. Next thing is urbanization. Yes, people are attracted towards uh, the hubs, the centers where industries are. A lot of people come from lots of places, well-educated, well-qualified, or even the laborers, manual uh, laborers, they also come from lots of places in search of um, work so that uh, they can um, 
they can earn salary and survive and uh, they can feed their uh, family so people come in search of lots of work industrialization gives them work and they settle over there so urbanization increase development of cities towns etc keep on happening now that keeps on happening because people can reach from any distant places in india to a particular industrial hub and they can get a work over there right increasing the population of that city so urbanization can happen and now when they come they need a place of residence they need food etc so that includes the development of the urbanization process so industrialization urbanization that is made possible only with the help of transportation it brings the urban and rural people as well as people all around the world closer to each other this is a very important point because if we see the rural people their main work is agriculture their main occupation is agriculture they make lots lots and lots of food stuff so they do not make it to consume themselves yes they produce such a lot of agricultural products that so that they can sell it and earn money so rural the population of the rural india yes and that is almost 80% yes and only 20% resides in towns and cities and uh, big mega cities so in order to reach those agricultural products to the nearby towns and cities and to feed the towns and cities we need a very good efficient road system railway system so it brings urban and rural people close to each other as well as now world is considered as a small village because with the help of speedy transport speedy com communication and speedy trade right so we are in contact all over the world to sell our products or to buy that products and this happens in a very short time because nowadays there are speedy aircrafts there are speedy uh, uh, the uh, ocean waterways which allows speedier transport between two countries with the help of the uh, water bodies right that is the oceans and seas so we can see that it brings the urban and rural people within the country closer to each other because of the uh, speedier transportation efficient transportation system and not only that it brings all of the world countries to near to each other because of the transportation good transportation system the distribution of natural resources is uneven everywhere and so transport of goods among various parts of the world becomes very important this point we have studied in lots of other chapters that natural resources are not distributed evenly all across the world and all across the countries they are unevenly distributed so i set up an industry over here somebody sets up an industry in india but the uh, raw material is not available or it is available in very short or small quantity then i have to import from other country so what happens is i need that raw material very quickly and constantly and continuously so that uh, the process of turning that raw material into finished product does not stop right so i need quite fast speedy transport and efficient transport which does not allow any a uh, hurdle in making the raw material available to me it can happen within the same country suppose an industry iron and steel industry uh, the dependent industry one of that is um, available in gujarat but the raw material comes from jharkhand or it comes from chatisgarh or it comes from bihar we need a very efficient uh, road system rail system which may, which can get me iron and steel either uh, uh, the iron ore so that we can process over here or it can give me iron and steel so that the raw material process is processed into finished products it can be done very speedily and ha that has to be continuous and that has to be consistent that means non stop so in this way uh, the distribution of natural resources is not even everywhere so transport system comes over there to make reach the raw material from place a to place b place b within a very short time and various parts of the world also becomes very important we already know the fact that japan being a small country and distributed in islands it doesn't have that much uh, raw material so what it does it it, does, it collects raw material from all over the world it buys raw material from all over the world japan's people are converting that raw material into finished products 
so their factories are running their mills are running but they are dependent upon the raw material coming from outside so that has to be constant that has to be continuous and that has to be consistent without fail otherwise the mills and factories over there will come to a stop if the raw material stop coming so they after producing now they again have to sell it so again you need transportation so transportation is quite vital not only within the country but as well as in dealing with the rest of the countries of the world better the transport system better the economic social and political stability of the country as money keeps on churning as the money keeps on changing hand as everybody has money in their head what happens the economy of the country becomes quite sound and for economic condition of the people economic condition of the country to remain sound better and get more better every time we need a very fast transportation system we need a better transportation system then only our economic will always be sound and good our social system will keep on and the social development will keep on happening political stability will keep on continuing and thus the country will keep on developing when the country develops people also develop and we have quite a good standard of living all that is possible if the infrastructural facilities and the transport modes are available to the required number thus transportation is one of the yardsticks to measure that we have already done now we come to the next stage that is development of transportation and the different means of transportation that man uses so first thing is we should learn right from the ancient time we should have that knowledge right from the ancient time what were the means of transportation and then only we can look at the development so we'll start from the beginning everybody knows beginning nothing was available when men uh, were in the primitive stage and they were called the hunters hunters and gatherers and they walked on foot right and then the wheels came development happened and so now we have transportation based on wheels right so we'll start from there and it is very important for you to remember all this and put this in your answer the movement of people and goods now this is the definition of transportation this is the definition of transportation what is transportation we all know the definition we will only be sure that what we are knowing is correct the movement of people and goods from one place to another is called transportation a very very simple definition very easy to understand and very easy to keep in mind right what is transportation transportation is nothing else if you close your eyes you can easily remember what is transportation moving people from one place to another moving material from one place to another so moving man and material from one place to another material will say it as goods that is the only difference so from the movement of people and goods from one place to another is called transportation a very very easy definition and that should be the first point in the answer because first you should know you should be able to write over there what is the meaning of transportation and then only we can talk about the means of transportation after we complete the means of transportation then we can uh, then we can go on with development of these transport modes so in layman's language what is transportation transportation can be defined as the process of going from one place to another now whether you are going you are carrying a bag so basically transport takes you plus your bag also right so we just understand in layman's language layman's language a simple way to understand transportation means going from one place to another earlier men used to live a wanderer's life that is what we discussed right now that we were hunters and gatherers we were living in a primitive way we were just collecting food or we were killing the animals and uh, taking the hide to make clothes for us clothing for us for protection is yes, and uh, the meat was used for the purpose of food so earlier men they used to live a wanderer's life so they walked on foot no need of any transport yes you are your own transport when he learned agriculture then he started living a steady and a settled life yes this is very important it took quite a lot number of years yes quite 
long number of years, hundreds of centuries it took from a primitive man to a man or human being who has learnt agriculture. Now when he learnt agriculture, then he had to make a house and he had to look after his field. He had to make the crop grow and take care of the crop and in those days of course uh, buying and selling was not that much but then he had to store what he reaped or the harvest he had to store now he cannot only eat uh, that wheat and make it into chapatis he needs vegetables he is not growing vegetables so he has to take vegetables from somebody else he is wearing clothes he is not making cotton he is not producing cloth so he has to buy it from someone now buying and selling was not there so it was a barter system right suppose i am making good uh, wheat my other friend is making a cloth my other friend is making some leather items so we exchange things among them without any money i'll give you wheat you give me clothes so he got wheat he didn't have wheat yes and he gave some of his clothes same way uh, I give wheat to the cobbler and I got shoes. So now he needs food. He just has shoes. So in this way, barter system, we started. But then it needs a little bit of transport. So wheels already had come into uh, place and we were transporting. Now we engaged animals. Now earlier an uh, animals were engaged to uh, take the load. Now these animals... A carriage, a small carriage was attached with the animals. The animals were harnessed to the carriage or the cart. And now the things became more easier, right? We can carry more load in a cart or a carriage. And we can have one or two animals attached or harnessed to the carriage so that they can take it, right? So when he learned agriculture, he started living a steady and a settled life. Earlier, he used to carry the things himself, right? Then he found out that animals can be domesticated. So he domesticated lots of animals like, um, say, donkey, horse, uh, who can, uh, those animals which can carry loads. So now he shifted his load onto the uh, horses or camels or donkeys and he used animals to carry the load. He earlier he used to carry the, his things himself. Later he made use of the animals as beasts of burden. Right? So, beasts of burden, beasts who carry the burden, your burden. Right? So, he used animals to carry his load. With the invention of wheel, this is a very, very important phase where he learned the use of wheels and Excel. Right? Two wheels he made and with the help of Excel, he joined the two wheels and put a cart on it. So, with the invention of wheel, man used several animals to put the, uh, pull the carts. Now, you know, and that can be a donkey cart, that can be a horse cart, that can be a cow, uh, camel cart, that can be a buffalo cart. So, wherever which type of animal, domesticated animals were available, depending on that, uh, human beings harness these uh, beast power or you can say animal power to draw their carts. This made transportation faster and also in larger quantities. Now earlier, uh, say one donkey, uh, donkey is small, so you can uh, have two bags of wheat over there, right? But if it's a horse, you can have three bags, but then there is a limitation, right? So he needs lots of animals to pull his load. Instead of that, if he harnessed two animals or one animal and made a cart over there behind, so you can have more stacks of wheat over there. So he can carry 10 bags of wheat at a time rather than carrying 3-4 animals to carry that load. So transportation was made more easier. Now instead of using uh, himself to carry his own burden, first he used the animals, then he attached carts behind that after the invention of wheel and now he can carry more load in lesser time. Thus, slowly and gradually the transportation developed. So, in this way, transportation developed. And we are human beings. We use our brains quite a lot, right? So, we found out different ways of making the things better, making the transportation better. We were not able to make progress because roads were not that. So, we made roads so that transportation can become faster. The same method, that is a horse cart or 
uh, a horse carriage but it can transport men and material in a more faster way right we improved upon it so transportation developed gradually now modern form of transportation mostly relies on mechanized 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 vehicles so now after the invention of steam engine things became quite fast right that same steam engine was used to run machines in the factories that same steam engine was used in making a, in making a railway that same steam engine was used in the uh, ships to make it a steamer and then things went on getting developed right so we had now we have now railway we have now uh, steamers running on steamships and we have factories running on the steam power right so gradually it took hundreds of centuries to come up to the mechanized form now mechanized form what is mechanized form the trucks the cars the railway that we use the ships modern ships run with diesel etc all of that is mechanized transportation uh, airplanes that we use the type of transportation that one can see in a region depends upon the factors like location, climate, relief, human population, etc. of that region. Now, transportation is dependent on the place where the person is living. For example, if it is a desertic condition, then we know desert villages are too far from each other, cities even more far from each other. In the in between, there is complete sand. Yes, where even the roads can disappear. So people will be making more use. Even modernized, mechanized transportation will be used. Yes, for example, railway can be used. For example, roads, better roads can be used, right? And it depends. If it if it is a mountainous terrain, if roads are um, made available over there, if roads can be built over there, then you can use mechanized transport. If roads cannot be built over there, if roads are inaccessible, then you got to use again back to that uh, beast of burden. You have to carry the load on, on a donkey or a mule or uh, even uh, the uh, horses, etc. It is even done today also. Yes, uh, no big surprise. Yes, there are lots of inaccessible e region where transportation uh, because railroad is not there, uh, roadways is not there, and it's not feasible. And because of less population, it's not needed over there. So, transportation how you use the transportation, which methods do you use, which means you use, depends first on factors like location where are you located yes if you are located on a plain area you get variety of transport variety of means yes you can use all the means you can use the river for transportation that is waterways you can use railways because railways the tracks can be better laid out on plain areas you will have very good efficient network of railways and roadways lots of roadways will be there lots of roads will be there which can take you to n number of destinations very quickly so if you are in a plain area then methods of transport will increase modes of transport will increase and that will be more speedier opposite if you are in some on some island if you are in a desert area in, if you are in some remote area mountainous area hilly area then depending upon the location the modes and means of transport can change next is climate if it is completely dry or if it's too wet right so in that way transportation will change relief depending upon the structure of the um, uh, of the top of the surface of the earth that is called relief that means it can be mountainous it can be desertic it can be plain area it can be rocky area seashore right so that way human population where human population is more transportation um, methods will be more equipments will be more methods and means will be more whereas if the population is sparse two three houses over here and two three houses after five kilometers you don't need that much of transport over there right so it depends on that also human population etc these are the factors on which type of transportation is dependent over and above these factors there are some other cultural factors also right adivasi area hai uh, poor area hai uneducated areas hai to usme transportation ko itna jada focus nahi hota because 
they do not have even money to pay for the bus fare or even pay they do not have any finished goods over there they do not have raw material that much so transportation is less required over there then technical development if it is an island or it's a remote area in the forest or on a hilly area mountainous area then there will be less number of industries over there only some typical industries will be there and enough transportation is available for that but you do not have any high uh, heavy industry or you do not have large scale industries over there where lots of transportation is needed for goods and man and material so there so that's a factor which uh, tells us what uh, type of transportation is used over here technical factors economic development if any area is economically backward then use of transportation will be generally the government transport and some private uh, trucks and cars etc but there won't be a heavy traffic over there because economically it is backward most of the people can't even afford a cycle so how you, how are you going to do transportation over there right it's not needed then uh, economic development then market and capital investments a good market is available over there yes there are uh, there's lots of capital investment over there there are lots of cap, uh, uh, factories over there different types of industries there uh, lots of raw materials available nearby and uh, when you have, um, you have enough number of uh, uh, labor over there each and every type of labor is available over there right right from manual labor to the most um, uh, the most useful uh, technical uh, te uh, technicians and enough number of qualified people working over there so everybody needs transport and when your finished goods are uh, uh, they are produced when the finished pr products are ready you again need transportation to various parts of the country and outside the country so there you will find lots of transportation lots of different type of transportation right from scooter to uh, airplanes might be visiting that uh, uh, place for so that men and material can be transported it will have very good uh, railway stations for uh, men and material both it will have a very good network of road leading to all different uh, directions so in this way if that is having a good market developed market capital investment some or political decisions always matters right uh, because of the political de uh, decisions say a totally economically backward area uh, very soon it develops in a span of 10 20 years and so economic development is seen social development is seen and as a result the transportation system gets better right so in this way political decisions also one of the factors how you see the type of transportation also affect the transportation in given area for example transportation is carried out by roads and railways in train regions this we have already discussed right where more density of population is there because people like to live in a plain area where they can carry out their routine where they can find lots of work because lots of industry are there right adi industry upar adi industry niche mountainous areas made becomes very difficult to transport raw material and again bring back the uh, finished products and transport every day uh, labor or manpower working in the industry to five ten kilometers high up and then again come back so that is a bit difficult but everything runs smoothly on a plain area so transportation is carried out by roads and railways in plain area whereas in mountain regions animals such as donkeys mules horses somewhere some of the places in the himalayas yaks are also used and uh, also men do the task of transportation sometimes even those animals cannot go further because a steep climb is there now animals cannot do that then uh, human beings they work as coolie and transport the uh, material to the top of the mountain where there might, might, might be a small village over there on the top yes uh, it has its own way of living but it lives quite higher in inaccessible areas where any transport cannot reach then people themselves have to carry their own load and they might keep people like coolies who can bring up the load uh, for a little bit of money and that is how they earn money so that type of transport also we can find so all in all we conclude our today's lecture over here uh, and continue in the next lecture
for example uh, people who carry load now bhutia people who live in the mountains yes in the himalayan areas bhutia people now there are lots of inaccessible areas in the himalayas where even the mules and the donkeys and the horses because of uh, sub zero temperatures over there and uh, quite steep climb right and after a time that trail that small trail on which the uh, mules especially mules and horses they walk and take the goods uh, after some time those the trails also disappear now you literally have to climb the rocks and uh, take the material forward so there bhutia people who live in the mountains themselves work as laborers to carry the goods up and down the mountain because lots of people are still living in the heights right there there might be a plain area they might be doing agriculture and little bit of cattle riding and all that because that is a little bit plain area there is a valley over there but to reach that area we have to climb steep climb where animals can't help us so both your people they uh, they work as coolies and they transport the goods and sometimes men material both of them to the place higher places besides apart from that elephants mules horses are used in the mountains and forests in the forest area for example uh, india is blessed with lots of forest in the uh, southern area in the uh, west bengal bihar jharkhand area you will find lots of uh, elephants over there elephants uh, the wild elephants they are caught they are tamed and uh, then they are used to Uh, carry the timber from deep in the forest to where the trucks can come and they load those uh, that timber over there in the trucks so elephants are used for transporting goods in forest same way mules and horses also used in most of the terrain uh, uh, forest one and mountainous one both of them camel is the best transport in the desert yes camel uh, because of certain uh qualities that camel has it can uh, uh remain thirsty or it can do without water for quite a long time it can use uh its own fat and stay without water for a long time because of the type of feet it has it's very good for uh walking in and running in the desert so camels are used extensively uh in the desertic condition whether it is uh india whether it is sahara or whether it is the uh, any other desert it and the world camels they are called the best transport in the desertic area in railway stations coolie does the work of transporting men and material from the train to uh, either the trucks or out of the station so that well, they are also ca- carriers of load so in railway station coolies do the work of carrying luggage on their head and they are also means of transport ship or a small boat is used as transport vehicle near the sea coast where river is fairly deep and ferry lead now if we are talking about rivers most of the rivers which come out of the himalayas they are perennial that means they have watered not only 24 by 7 but they have watered 365 days and they are quite deep also so small ships or boats can ply in that river because it has depth and it can carry lots of load uh, water transport is called one of the cheapest means of transport so a ship or a small boat is used in a transport in the interior of the country uh, where if it is if it is a sea coast then also small ships and boats can be used for fishing or from or for transporting goods from one place to another on the coast mechanized form of transport include two wheelers cars that is four wheelers buses rickshaw three wheelers trains aeroplanes etc these are all mechanized which run on machines thus there are several forms means and vehicles for transportation that man uses in the modern day man uses each and every type of uh, mode of transport yes and means a ways and means of transport methods of transport in whichever way possible so that the men and material can be uh, reached to from place a to place b within a very short time making use of all the type of transportation available to him so with this we complete this chapter uh, complete this uh, ch- lecture over here rest of it will continue in the next lecture thank you students